Ahoy! After I already introduced you to the small X aka Hatchet yesterday, today we're going to talk about the big hitter and that is of course the Great X. In this video I'll introduce you to the basics of the Great X, how it works and how you may want to level it with a leveling aura as well. My name is Duke Sloth and I will be your guide. Now in terms of feel, I don't think I need to explain much. It is a very big axe and it feels like you're swinging a very big axe. It has a very wide hit range, a very wide cone in front of you where you can hit enemies. And out of all weapons, I would say this one chases after enemies the best as well. It's even more magnetic than the hatchet. But while it's a big and heavy weapon, the Great Axe actually has some very good mobility, some of the best mobility of all melee weapons. And also has some very quick abilities and attack cancels, so it's not as sluggish as you may think. Due to its wide attacks, the Great Axe is also fantastic in any sort of group combat situation. The Great Axe was a little bit bugged in the last playtest, which means that it was a little bit overpowered at that point. It'll be interesting to see if that still holds up after some fixes have been applied. The Great Axe is a single scaling weapon and it only scales with strength. However, if you're tanking and frontlining with it, you probably want some constitution along with your strength and not just purely focus on damage. The left skill tree of the Great Axe is Reaper. Here you'll find multiple abilities that allow you to catch up to enemies, chase them, but also deal massive damage to them, and most of the perks are very focused on dealing higher damage or healing yourself while dealing damage. The Mola tree, on the other hand, is a little bit more defensive while still providing a lot of offensive perks as well, and it seems to be somewhat focused on having multiple enemies around you for various benefits. In my opinion, the Mola tree lacks a little bit of identity and may also need some buffs to its ability's damage. One perk that I want to highlight specifically before we go deeper into the individual abilities is Bloodlust. This is the last perk in Reaper and allows you to move 30% faster and deal 15% more damage while looking at an enemy within 15 meters. This perk is insanely strong due to the high mobility paired with very high damage, so this is one that you want to try and get as early as possible. Now let's have a closer look at the abilities. Starting out with Reap, this ability pulls in enemies 5 meters in front of you and deals 110% weapon damage. If you max out this ability with additional points, you can actually get an extra hit that deals 115% weapon damage after the first pull. The second ability is Charge. This allows you to charge 10 meters dealing 120% weapon damage when you reach the target or press left mouse button. However, as you can see, the final attack here has a bit of an upswing to it, which can make it very hard to confirm depending on what angle the enemy is towards you, and I would highly recommend getting the max perk of this ability being Unpredictable Strike, which turns this last strike into a higher damaging one that also is a wider swing and much easier to confirm. The third ability here is Execute, a relatively slow attack that deals 200% weapon damage and 300% against targets under 50% health. When you level it, you can even turn it into a crit against low health targets. Obviously a very strong ability, but also very slow. On the Mola side, the first ability is Maelstrom, a spin attack that deals 110% weapon damage and is meant to pull enemies closer to you. You can even extend the range on that. Big problem with this ability is that the range, even when upgraded, is very short and that the ability itself locks you in place. You cannot move forward while using this. That means most enemies can just walk out of the range of this ability. This is in a very stark contrast to Reap that we talked about, which is a very reliable pull. As such, in my opinion, Maelstrom is almost purely a PvE ability. The next ability is Whirlwind, a spinning attack that deals 50% weapon damage four times. Different from Maelstrom, you can move while using this and you can also increase the hits to up to 7. This is primarily a decent mob farming ability, maybe it can have uses in scenarios like war as well, but the third ability is usually highly preferred over it and that is a Gravity Well. In Gravity Well you throw your axe forward and create a vortex which pulls enemies to its center for 3 seconds. After these 3 seconds end, it explodes and deals 125% weapon damage. While caught in Gravity Well, it can be very hard for enemies to escape unless they have any movement abilities. This is one of the most favored melee abilities in war to keep people off a point. The strength of the Great Axe primarily lies in its ability to keep enemies close in a variety of different ways. The Great Axe is extremely good at punishing mistakes by keeping enemies locked down for a long time. It's also fantastic for AoE farming, of course. The weak point of the Great Axe are enemies that don't let you get close in the first place. 
For example, the Ice Gauntlet has quite a few ways to keep the Great Axe at a distance with an ice wall as well that you can't dash through and that can really hinder the Great Axe's full potential. When it comes to weapons to pair it with, you want to look at strength weapons. The Hatchet works, the Warhammer works, the Sword and Shield also works decently and technically the Spear can also work even though it's not ideal. Also, like with any other weapon, going for a life staff and using an ember gem has been pretty strong in the past, at least we'll see if nerfs may change that. Now here's a 20 weapon mastery build that would work based on the current available information. Keep in mind that with the open beta there may be changes to some weapon perks that could influence the outcome here. If there's anything that's changed that you're unsure about, feel free to hop over to my Twitch, twitch.tv slash dukesloth where I'll be live streaming the beta and I can answer any questions regarding these skill trees for you. Alright, now for the order of spending our points. We're gonna begin with reap or pull and get a point in charge afterwards. This will give us a lot of extra mobility and a little bit of extra damage. Now the next point is going into execute. We're gonna get execute for now because we want to get gravity well eventually but we want to get bloodlust first and in order to get bloodlust we cannot go all the way down to gravity well in the beginning. So we're going to do that first and then switch over later. At this point, you have quite a few different options in terms of damage output. The one that I would recommend here primarily is Greed, which gives you extra damage on your light attacks, which is just really, really nice to have. And then Keen Edge, which increases your critical damage. So you're just going to be hitting a lot harder between those two, especially if you get some crits. Another one that is also nice is Critical Condition. This is something you can look at later. But at this point, I think the more valuable choice is to go Frenzy Momentum and then go into Unpredictable Strike. So you get a lot of extra early damage with that charge, which is really, really strong. Now, if you're looking for early PvP, then you should also consider getting Reap range relatively early because that range makes a massive difference, in my opinion. If not, then that's not as important. And now, again, you are a bit flexible in terms of what exactly you want to get here. Uh, I think, for example, that uh, Death Embrace is an interesting option. Or you could just go further down here and say, okay, I want to have uh, some healing. And after we get some healing, we can then go into Fail Attraction. So you get an extra hit on your Reap afterwards. And then you get Bloodlust. So now we have all the perks that we want. Now we need to spend some more points in the Reaper tree before we can switch over. So I'm going to put a point into Death Embrace here. So we have more damage against targets below 50% health. And then you can, for example, go into critical gains if you want to get a little bit of healing when you crit. Or you could go into frustration, which gives you extra damage when enemies block. You can also go into feed. I think it's not my preferred choice. Um, or you could go into a critical condition, which gives you a higher crit chance against targets with low health. Now, at this point, you should have enough points to respec and go all the way down to gravity well. So you take your point out of the execute, you can take away obviously points in whichever you want and you spend them over here on this side. You go into heavy pull, which uh, pulls enemies closer to you. You go into enduring strikes, which is maybe not that great if they fix the bug that's uh, connected to it, but it should still be decent because you still get damage reduction while using heavy attacks. So in PvP, it might not matter that much anymore, but especially in PvE, it will. And it'll allow you to counter certain things with grit as well. And then you go into Gravity Well, and now you have the ability that you really want, which is a big AoE CC that hits enemies quite well. And if you put another point here in Crowded Well, you also get 10% extra damage. Not the most, not the biggest uh, change here, but a little bonus. I also like uh, the point here in Gravity, which increases the duration of your pulls, basically, or the enemy being held still after pull. I haven't exactly tested how it works for everything, but generally it feels better to have them uh, locked down with that. Then you can, for example, get a point into uh, Revenge if you want to as well, take something out here. If you want to get uh, a little bit of a bonus for blocking. But again, you're relatively flexible in how you spend your points. At this point, I showed a slightly different suggestion at the start. Uh, the overall idea stays the same. You want to definitely have Reap, you want to have Charge, and you want to have Gravity well, unless that's massively nerfed. And then you want to have some perks around it, which are, in my opinion, not all the best. It's just a bit of a lackluster potential in terms of perks against a single target at least. There are a lot of perks that uh, benefit you if you hit multiple targets, like this one for example, or I think this one as well, when you have multiple enemies around you. So if that's your thing, you can definitely spec into those. But for single target damage or for farming one mob as well, uh, those don't really do much for you. 
This should give you a good idea of how to build in the open beta. If you want to know more about builds for other weapons or you want to know more about in-depth builds in the future, then feel free to click the sub button and maybe the bell. I will be doing both more melee guides before the beta and then in-depth weapon guides after the beta. Again, if you have any questions regarding spec changes with beta changes, then feel free to hop over to my Twitch, twitch.tv slash dxloth, and I will answer that there for you during the beta because I'll be live streaming it. Or you can ask on my Discord, links down below in the description. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed this and I hope to see you on the next one soon. Duke Sloth, out.